So if, if the mass on the surface goes up, the velocity goes down, and you can actually detect that change. That's the principle of operation for the device. As a sample would bind to the surface, we would actually see a, a shift in the phase. And that the degree to which it shifts is, the, is proportional to the amount of sample that is bound to the surface. Researchers at Sandia National Laboratories and the University of New Mexico have developed a biosensor system that provides fast, low-cost detection of a wide range of pathogens. Combining Sandia's experience in building surface acoustic wave, or SAW, devices and UNM's work in detecting bioagents has resulted in a system sensitive enough to detect viruses, which very few technologies can do rapidly. With both of our skill sets, we were able to merge our expertise and in a way that would uh, build a device that could actually, in real time or near real time, uh, detect both deadly and medically relevant uh, viruses and bacteria. Currently, we've adapted it for its use to be able to detect a virus in the blood, particularly HIV and hepatitis B and C. Uh, this is very important in disaster medicine sort of situations like we just had in, in Haiti. Uh, in these sort of situations, it's very difficult to transfuse blood product. And if we can test uh, a person very rapidly on site, verify that their blood's good for transfusion, we can help the trauma victims right there on site. Initially built to detect anthrax and other bioagents, the sensor has been customized for medical applications. Most acoustic waves are suppressed by liquid samples, and most biological samples are liquid, so the team has carefully chosen substrates that create a sheer horizontal wave, allowing the sensor to work with fluid samples such as blood and saliva. New approaches to boost the selectivity and reliability of the sensor have also been developed, and further work has focused on crafting and miniaturizing the device into an easy-to-use package that requires very little power or training to operate. One of Sandia's first steps relied on computational innovation. When the project was being developed, we wanted to design a sensor that allowed us to um, measure and rapidly detect uh, antigens in solution. But in order to make a sensor, you first have to solve uh, a very complex problem. So we had to deal with complex equations and be able to model those across an entire sensor. So in order to do that, we needed these computer modeling codes. To build the computer codes takes a lot of time and effort, but once we did that, we were able to capture most of the physical effects of generating the surface acoustic wave. And it turns out that allowed us to transfer that technology to other acoustic projects at Sandia. So the sample is introduced into the fluidic package and the current fluidic package doesn't require pumps or valves. The sample is introduced into a well which then through the hydrodynamics is wicked across the surface of the sensor. We have used acoustic waves that propagate on a crystal substrate and those waves then are influenced by whatever material binds to the surface. So as, as stated, the surface itself is sensitive to a material that binds and the selectivity is determined by a biological material that you put on the surface. As the sample sweeps across, the sensor itself is excited with an RF frequency. The acoustic wave travels uh, perpendicular to the flow of the of the sample and as it travels across it it travels at a certain speed as the the chemistry interacts your target binds to the surface it slows that wave down the electronics then measures the difference in the speed between the uninhibited acoustic wave and this inhibited one and that is proportional to the amount of sample then that, that is bound to the surface Researchers are studying other applications for the biosensor, including the detection of genetic characteristics that could lead to better treatment options for inherited diseases. And they have partnered with Adaptive Methods Incorporated to commercialize the unit for point-of-care medical diagnostics. Meanwhile, work continues to improve both the software and hardware of the system. And then we have a plate that mounts onto the top 
and that holds the cartridge in place. And this is the system that UNM will be using shortly. What Darren is creating is a cartridge that we should be able to simply plug in and pull out so your loading and so forth will be a lot more easy. Well, I can't tell you how enthusiastic we are at the Health Science Center uh, regarding this device. Uh, not only does it represent a very successful partnership between the national laboratories and our academic health center, uh, but it also really represents uh, the potential to have a very significant impact on the way uh, physicians practice medicine.